Hi, everyone, and welcome to the latest episode of Get Hired Live. I'm Andrew Seaman, the editor at LinkedIn behind Get Hired, which is a weekly newsletter and also these wonderful conversations. Thank you so much for joining us. Today, we have a great conversation with Dr. Lisa Orbe Austin, who is a psychologist and also an author of an upcoming book known as Own Your Greatness, Overcome Imposter Syndrome, Self-Doubt, and Succeed in Life and also a career expert and a LinkedIn top voice. She has many credentials. So we're gonna be talking to her in just a bit. Like always, I want to encourage you to join the stream, ask questions, engage, and something else that I've been asking people to do because I think it's a wonderful help is to look at the comments in the stream and see if there are people in your industry, in your area who are looking for to job search. And what you can do is connect with them, chat, talk about your job search strategies and network. The whole point of job searching and a large part of LinkedIn is to network. So you can actually use this as an opportunity to do that. So I hope you do. But without further ado, I want to bring in uh, Dr. Lisa Orbe Austin, who is a good friend of Get Hired. She has been on Get Hired Live before when we were able to be in a studio, and she's also been in the newsletter quite a bit. So hello, welcome, and thank you for joining us. Hi, Andrew. Thank you for having me. I feel like it's a very important time to do this. So I'm really, really a pleasure to kind of be here. Yes, thank you. And and it's um, I want to tell everyone that below you can see Lisa's LinkedIn profile. So be sure to follow her. That'll be on throughout the entire show. And so many of you sent in questions ahead of time on different posts and we try to get them all in. So we'll get, be getting to those at first. But like I said, be sure to put questions in the stream and get to those as they come in. And um, at, at first, before we get to that, I just want to say, you know, Dave, hello from Chicago. Melissa, hello uh, from Montreal. I'm so happy that you're all joining us. And um, you're going to notice that some of the questions are a bit different than maybe what people submitted. We try to make them as broad and applicable to as many people as possible. So I hope that uh, a lot of you will benefit from questions that other people ask, and maybe it might ring true with what you ask. So let's take the first question here. We have it from Alice. What will companies be looking for in candidates during the pandemic that's different from what they're looking for before it hit? What do you think, Lisa? So I mean, I think, you know, generally, client, um, you know, hiring managers are looking for the same types of skills and expertise that they were looking for before. So I don't think that has to change. I do think, you know, what I'm hearing from a lot of hiring managers is that it's very important to feel like the people that they're going to hire can hit the ground running, that there may not be a lot of room or bandwidth for a long onboarding process or a long learning curve. So I am hearing sort of like a like pull for people who are ready to go and feel like they can kind of like get going on the job pretty immediately, learn very quickly, kind of pick the pick up the pace and kind of fit in pretty quickly into what's already happening. Yes, I think yeah. one of the things I've been hearing from people is how do you stand out in this difficult environment? And also what ex exactly are people looking for? So I think that's a great question and an important answer is that, you know, it, the qualities that make a good employee are there, but there are certain things that maybe you emphasize more than you would have uh, before the pandemic hit. So yeah. that's, that's great advice. Um, let's move to our next one. We have one. Sh this was asked by a few people, so that's why there's not a name attached. Yeah. But should you take any job or should you focus on getting a job you want? I think that I think a lot of people are facing that right now. Their money might be a little bit tighter, yeah. but they don't necessarily want to just take any job. What What is your advice for those people? I mean, it's a question I get asked a lot. And it's a very tricky question because it's very individual. It really depends on what your circumstances are. So if you have runway, if you have financial security and you can kind of wait um, for you know six months, three months to kind of get exactly what you want, you can do that. But I think if you feel like there is press and you need security, you have to think about that component when you're, you're delaying a potential position for a while to kind of get the thing that you want. So I do think it's really important to kind of think about your particular position and think about what you need at this moment. Um, because, it, and it also depends on the industry. Some industries are booming and doing really well right now and some are hurting. So it really depends on your industry. It depends on your own needs. Um, and you have to take those into consideration when you decide whether you're gonna do it now or wait till you get the exact thing that you want. Um, Yes. I, I, and like you said, I think a lot of people, you know, you've been getting asked that question. And I think a lot of people are wondering that because so many people 
you know, they know that it is a difficult job market. So exactly yeah. what do they do? And I, you touched on an important point that I continue to hear from economists and recruiters is that it really depends on what industry you're in De yeah. that actually depends on whether or not they're, the hiring has fallen dramatically. Yes. So in places like aviation, hiring has obviously fallen off yep. substantially. But if you're in retail or even if you're in different support services. It's yeah, like logistics. Yeah, like a lot of interesting places have actually boomed in this moment. Um, and I think, you know, it's, it's for me, like, you know, it's, uh, you know, I was, uh, you know, an executive coach in 2008 when that crash happened. And when that crash happened, it felt very like ubiquitous. Everyone got hurt. Um, where this one, you know, this particular moment feels very idiosyncratic. It feels like some industries are doing really well and some are not. Some are prepared for the recession because they've been talking about it for a bit. So they, they're cash they're cash heavy. So they can do certain things others can't. So it really, the preparedness and sort of what how this particular situation, this pandemic hit different industries is very differential. So I don't think it's a blanket, everyone gets scared. I don't think that's what's happening. Yes, and one thing that I noticed too is um, we've been keeping a list on LinkedIn.com. So the LinkedIn editors have been updating this list regularly every day about companies that are hiring and they're reaching out in various ways. And what I noticed at first, it was a lot of the retail frontline workers who were in incredible demand at first. But now we're seeing a lot of software companies, a lot of technology companies, uh, a lot of sort of office jobs start coming back and say, hey, we're recruiting now. Yeah. So I'm wondering if there's actually maybe some people who are coming back to the hiring process because yep. they said, hey, listen, we know how to hire now. We had to take a few weeks to figure that yeah. out, but we got it. Uh, so I think that's very encouraging. Yeah. Um, and I want to I want to say um, hi to Tapan from Ireland. I'm sorry if I mispronounce your name. Sadhu from Singapore. And then we actually have a uh, question from the stream from Renee, and I think this might uh, be up your alley. Uh, it feels really hard emotionally to leave a team right now amid this crisis. Any advice for how to deal with the feeling that you're abandoning your team? Um, I think probably a lot of people are feeling that either through layoffs, furloughs, or just having to step away to take care of loved ones. Yeah, I mean, I think the question's really interesting, and I think it sort of depends on the context, right? So if you're if you're leaving your team, and it's just from because of the fact that you're now working remotely, and the team feels disjointed, I think it's thinking about ways in which you can kind of build some morale and camaraderie around the team. I've you know heard certain clients are doing like you know office happy hour at a certain time. We're finding ways to kind of connect in ways outside of the work. Um, so I think that's really useful. I mean, if if you've been let go and you're leaving your team, you know, stay in contact with the relationships that you do have and that are important to you, even if you're no longer working. Like, there's still ways to kind of maintain those relationships. Um, support, you know, mentees who are underneath you and like give them some. I, I've a lot of my clients have been like supporting mentees and like supporting people to kind of help to adjust to situations in which you know are very difficult for them because they may be young in the work. So. Um, you know, do what you can to kind of still con connect in the ways that you want to connect with the team. Maybe it depends on sort of what's happened and why you're leaving the team. Yeah, I think that's great advice. I, I know a lot of people, even if you leave a job willingly, face sort of an identity issue because so much of what you do is tied to where you spend mm -hmm. your day and usually that's work. Yeah. Um, I want to jump to another question that is also, I think, very popular, and I know we receive from a few people, is what should furloughed people do? And I, someone very close to me is actually in this situation. Should they ride out the furlough if it's for two months, three months, or should they just start looking for work immediately? If you were my client, I'd tell you to look for work um, because you just can't guarantee that you'll get the job. Um, you know, you'll get your job reinstated once this is over. It really depends on sort of what the what what the impact is to your organization. So if it's really devastating, you may not return. And so I think it's very smart to right now get into a search. Um, and in the very at very least, you have options and choices if you want to return, and it does become available to you again. But I give yourself choices. Um, loyalty to an organization may not pay off in this particular moment. So I think it's important to kind of, you know, get back into the swing of things and apply. Yes, no, I think that's great advice. And even if I think it's one of those things about keeping the job search going, which was, is what I hear from a lot of people is just keep going. And yeah. it doesn't mean that you have to be applying constantly, but you could be keep working on your strategy. I assume. Yeah, yep, networking, all the, all the different pieces of your strategy, yep. Great. Don't, and yeah, don't wait. 
we have a question from Jamie, and it's actually a question that we received uh, in advance from a few people, and that is, how should people address ageism in this market? Because ageism yeah. is prevalent regardless yeah. of the economy, but especially in this situation, how do you think people should confront that? I mean, I think you have to watch for the the common stereotypes about that may be impacted specifically at this particular moment. So around like lack of you know skill around technology. So if you're going through technological interviews with videos and things like that, make sure you are agile, you are comfortable. There are no issues because all of a sudden it will become you'll become labeled in that way, even if it's just a glitch that anyone would experience. They're expecting certain things. I think you want to also like leverage your experience. When we talked about earlier about hit the ground running, when you are older in the marketplace, you also have a significant amount of experience that that and have been through a lot, have been through other crises, have been through other moments in which you have been able to excel. I think you would sell all of those things, like the maturity and the ability to kind of manage under crisis, the ability to kind of have an extensive amount of experience and hit, and hit the ground running, and your technological pieces sound. And you don't have any issues there because we're working in a very technological way right now. De definitely. And my best tip, and um, this is not mine, I got it from Sarah Johnston, uh, who got it from someone else, but I put <laughs> googly eyes next to my webcam. Uh, because even though I was raised sort of, you know, on the internet with webcams and all this stuff, uh, the I, I still need a reminder to look at the camera. So I put <laughs> googly eyes next to my webcam to remember I have to look there, not at the person's face, because it looks awkward. Yeah, uh, to the person at home. Yeah. Uh, the next question, and I'm sorry, we're getting so many in, it, it, I want to make sure we get to as many as we can. And this is something else that has been coming up a lot, and that's for college students that are graduating in May, or maybe they graduated in December. Um, what should they be doing? Because yeah. they're, they saw this great job market just a few weeks ago turn basically on its head. So what should a graduating senior be doing right now? Yeah, I mean, I think you you need to be kind of reaching out to your career center and like figuring out what, what services they have, what recruiting options they have, because they are still working, they may just be working remotely. So make sure you engage your career center. I think you need to engage any associations and organizations that you work with, sororities, fraternities, like, um, you know, other kind of organizations that you've worked with that have helped you over the years. I think you reach, need to reach out to all your former internship, you know, uh, supervisors, like, Right, right now is the time to build community, reach out, see who's hiring, see what's available, see what the kind of temperature is in your particular field, um, but do not wait. Um, so right now you need to be doing something now to move yourself forward. Um, and also the, what we've also often seen in these times is that younger workers are kind of preferred. That's why the ageism question came up, right? Because they're cheaper. And so I do also think there still be opportunity for you um, at entry level. So I do think you, but you want to kind of be networking and kind of building relationships and helping, you know, to navigate what's going on from somebody who has their, you know, kind of like is in the inside. Yeah. I think that's great advice. And, and networking, I always try and tell people is that every job search expert that I talk to, every recruiter, if they say there's one thing you should be doing, it's networking. It's and everything. Out. It's so <laughs> everything. And it, and it, it's surprisingly easy to do when you're stuck at home. So, yeah. you know, there's really no excuse at this point because you could just say, hey, listen, can I have five minutes on Zoom or uh, Skype or something like that? Or, yeah. you, know, on, you know, LinkedIn yeah. Live. <laughs> and I'll give, I'll give a specific tip around this too. Like, you know, first of all, use your LinkedIn. Like people do not understand the power of LinkedIn. It is such a powerful platform um, and use it um, to kind of help you build out your network and scaffold it. Um, but I will also say, when you reach out to somebody, don't ask, don't do the ask immediately. Reach out with some connection point first. Be like, hey, I read your article on this, or I saw you once went here, or I, I took a look at this this video that you did on X. I really liked it and highlight a couple points from it so it shows you actually did read it. Connect first, you know, show value first, and then you know after that do the ask because a lot of people are getting a lot of asks and they're sorting them out by feeling like who who really kind of cares also about me. Um, so be very relational rather than transactional in your networking. I think that's a great advice. And in fact, I remember doing a newsletter on paying it forward during the job search process. And everyone that basically chimed in said, you know, when I've passed along advice or passed along a lead to someone else, it came back to me in some way. Yeah. So it was that they were like, hey, I should be looking out for 
you know, Bob because he helped me or something like that. So yes. it, it's, that's great. And I want to thank Abigail for that question about college. Uh, she was in the stream. I also, I want to follow up because this is a weird question that we got in advance and I, I think you might have seen it, but basically it's college students who are, are interviewing and an employer was asking for additional names during the process to say, hey, who's your network? And basically taking these names and also looking to see if there were any good candidates in those. What do you think about this process? Is this something that people should push back on? I know this is a sort of a specific situation, but I wanted to, to yeah. see what you thought about it. I think, I think a couple things about it. One is there are certain industries where your book of business matters. And so people will ask about your contacts, like PR, communications. You have to have relationships and books of business and be able to demonstrate them. Also, like... Um, Finance, like financial planning and other places are places where you have to come in with a book of business. And so these kinds of questions can be common in certain industries, um, but it should be about your industry related kind of skill, right? It shouldn't be just like, give me contacts just because I, I want to know who else you know. I, I wouldn't get into doing that. Um, I, I find if, it, if it's not related to your business and having a book of business, being able to demonstrate those contacts, I think it's really much more important to kind of like to be able to pass on something that there's going to be a lot of scam things that happen now because it's happened in 2008. And so I do think you need to do your due diligence on people and, you know, kind of make sure that they have a reputation and that you can find them, you know, in the in the internet and find, like, find their reputation and things like that. Like, do not trust everything just because they're saying they have opportunities for you. Do not trust every recruiter because they say they have a job opportunity. And I would be very careful to give out contacts without telling anybody else that you're actually mentioning their name in accordance. Because if they get a contact and say that you, you recommended they reach out to you, they could be very upset about that. So I think it's really important to kind of protect your contacts too. Definitely. And I think yeah, as a personal role, I never give out anyone's contact information without yeah. sort of telling the person first and even asking if it's okay. Um, yeah. Even if it's someone that you know very closely, yeah. it's good to give them a warning so they're not yes. caught off guard. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And and uh, we have uh, more comments coming into the stream. Vidya has a great question. How can you keep the interview process from dying on the vine because of a lack of final round in-person interviews? I think that's a great question. And probably some a lot of people are experiencing that from before the pandemic and sort of stretching into all of this now. Yeah. I mean, I think that... Um you really can't change someone's process. So if the organization decides they, they are not going to hire anyone till they've met them in person, you can't really change that. I do think you want to make sure that you come off very personable in video interviews, that you're very alive and not stiff. So they do feel like they get a really good sense of you um, and that they feel like they can, they can move forward without having to meet you in person. So I do think you want to really practice that skill and make sure that they're, you're showing your dynamic, you're engaged, you're human, you can act even across a video platform. I do also think you want to make sure that you have other offers. It's easier to move something forward when you're like, well, you know, I know that you're on pause until you actually, you know, meet me in person. However, I have this other offer in hand and, you know, they, they want to move forward. So, you know, I just want to let you know that I'm going to have to make a decision in X, Y or Z weeks. Um, so I think it's way easier to press somebody to kind of change their process when they see that you're also a commodity and someone else, you know, wants to hire you. Um, but it is hard when uh, organizations decide a certain process, it's hard to change that unless they, they are dying to have you. And so. Especially now when a lot of places have implemented hiring freezes to, yeah. to basically pause stuff. And for recruiters, I think it's important to remember that uh, recruiters want the process to continue because that's what they do. So if you're an applicant, money. <laughs> yeah, if, for, if you're an applicant, it's not that the recruiters are keeping you waiting. It's because they, they want the pipeline to continue. Unfortunately, it's just things outside of their control that yeah. are, are gumming it up. Uh, and I want to get into a little bit about what you're writing, what you wrote about and what your upcoming books about, which is imposter syndrome. And um, we had a question come in from John that asked about how do you level up during this time? So how do you basically say, you know, I was a manager, but I want to be a senior manager. Is that possible during this time? And can you make that, can you make that play or should you wait a bit to, to do such a big ask? I mean, I think like we were saying earlier, it depends on the industry and in some industries you have to be careful. They're kind of penny pinching and they're concerned. And so they want to make sure that they're making, you know, full bets on somebody that they can kind of trust that's going to go right. So I think in some ways where there's a, they're, they're a little less risk tolerance because tolerant because of what's going on, I think you're going to see a little bit of pushback on that. However, in other industries, people are still, I am hearing actively every week, people still taking a risk on somebody to give them a promotion. I think it's really arguing clearly, not arguing, but kind of.